the Renaissance. Um, Rena uh, Re Re Renaissance. Oh, God. Um, look, the the early modern period. All right, its name doesn't really matter. <coughs> What happened was that Europe transitioned from being medieval to being modern. In the arts, sciences and literature. In music, in architecture, medicine and astronomy. The mindset changes. Think Florence. Think painting in perspective. From this to this. Think Da Vinci, Donatello and Machiavelli. Copernicus and Shakespeare. From the fear, obedience and superstition of the medieval to the self-confidence, ingenuity and potential of the modern. And think adventure. It is during this period that first Spain and Portugal and later Dutch and English venture beyond the bounds of Europe to conquer and colonise in the New World, East Indies and beyond. The Spanish took guns, Bibles, smallpox and genocidal massacres to the Americas. They returned with gold, potatoes, turkeys and syphilis. Just like in the arts and sciences, religious scholars draw upon those same wellsprings of personal inquiry and creativity that define the Renaissance and look to reimagine the life of Christian Europe. The Reformation, as it became known, sought in essence to bypass the authority and ritual of the Catholic Church and place the path to salvation in the hands of the individual. Deliverance was by faith, or else by predestination, the bright judgment of God. The reformers emphasised the primacy of the Bible and returned to the original Greek texts. They released new translations in the everyday vernacular in German, French, English and Dutch so that all might access the word of God. The interpretations and pretensions of the Catholic priesthood no longer required. The church, which, by contrast, had established a colossal hierarchy of all-powerful priests, bishops, cardinals and popes, naturally sought to maintain their monopoly on the souls of the faithful. The subsequent counter-reformation thus demanded obedience to the word not just of God, but to priests and pope alike. It was the church that defined religious truth and orthodoxy. The church now defended by the newly established Jesuit thought police, an inquisition, and by the burning of books, and of people. They even patronised a new artistic style to celebrate the power and majesty of the church. Think this. It was this religious schism, not the Renaissance, that was to impact the people most directly. The Reformation, that was to exercise the full extent of European passions, resources and ingenuity. It was a complete bloodbath. In France as elsewhere, the familiar conflict of state versus people, monarchy versus nobility, was now fought using the new vernacular of beliefs and spirit of the Reformation. 
During the wars of religion, the violence reached its apogee during the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre in August 1572, in which tens of thousands of Protestants were butchered by their Catholic rivals. In Britain, the civil wars of 1642-51 did indeed pitch adherence of the personal rule of the King against those of Parliament, but also too of various denominations of Protestantism against one another. Indeed, not since the execution of Mary Queen of Scots in 1587 had the English to contend with a serious Catholic challenge to the established Protestant orthodoxy. To satisfy that particular brand of persecution, the righteous might travel to Ireland, think Oliver Cromwell, think the Sarkadrahada in 1649. Each region struggled to contend with the twin stresses of political and religious factionalism. In the Netherlands, the spread of Calvinism provided the impetus for an 80-year revolt against Spanish Catholic rule. The church responds by ambitiously sentencing the entire population of the Netherlands to death. Finally, in 1579, the region splits into a Spanish-controlled southern Flanders and an independent and relatively tolerant northern Dutch Republic. Think commerce. Think the world's first stock exchange. Think Rembrandt. The provinces of the Holy Roman Empire joined the fun in 1618, when the Habsburg authorities attempt to curtail the religious freedoms of their Protestant subjects in Bohemia. In response, a delegation of Czech nobles sent to Prague Castle and throw two of the Jesus Habsburg Christ. governors out the window into a large pile of sh Proper history books call it a dung heap. The resulting Thirty Years' War, which draws in most of Europe's major powers, ends in 1648 with the Treaty of Westphalia, and Germany utterly destroyed, nearly half of its 21 million population dead. Thanks for listening. If you like this, subscribe and comment below.